Welcome to the 805 Post Show, and what a show it's going to be here at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. What a way to finish things off. Our champions have been crowned. Ronnie Blakey with Laura Anneva and Peter Mel. Laura, your initial thoughts after what was a monster day. Wow. <laughs> Is that all you got for me? I'm not surprised. No, it, it was awesome though, wasn't it? Uh, I mean, really, uh, we saw the, the best rise up today. Stephanie Gilmore was just a, a woman on a mission. Well, yeah, I really can't even uh, comprehend everything that's happened today. It's been a long day, but, you know, short in the scheme of things with this year. It's been a, you know, a huge calendar year. And then to finish on today, what an incredible, you know, showing and uh, the stories that unfolded. I can't wait to unpack them all. And we have two new world champs. We sure do. Uh, Peter, the, those lower seeds really pushed hard today. It was impressive. Completely different to, to last year's Rip Curl WSL finals. We could have gone 20 years until we saw someone from that first match get all the way to a world title. Um, and it happened in the very second year, which is incredible. I mean, the feat that we saw Stephanie do here to do what she did today, five heats, winning every single one of them all the way through and winning her eighth world title incredible feat you talk about the the goat of the sport she was trying to give it uh, as much as a way to carissa but ultimately stephanie uh, she earned it today and every bit of it and uh, it, and never once showing any fatigue in my eyes i mean every wave was full on 100 percent and it never looked like she was tired whatsoever i mean she could have gone another three heats yeah they're gonna have a, a close look at, at steph's road to to victory here today but right now let's have a look at the men's bracket and see what unfolded it, it it was really destiny today. Felipe Toledo, he, he's been so worthy of a world title. He's been in contention in the past. He couldn't be beaten here last year by anyone but Gabriel Medina. Medina not here this year, and he rightfully got his first title. And, and, I, and I felt wholeheartedly that Felipe is the best out here at Trestles. Um, just everything he brings to the table is, uh, you know, top three in the world. It's, his errors are right there, his car work, his speed, all of it. His linkage, his wave choice, um, his team, everything. Uh, so it was destiny for him today, and it would have been a heartbreak to see him not take his world title, considering how the season he had. There's still work to do in his arsenal, right? We could all say it. Oh, yeah, Tahiti. We want to see him do better in Tahiti. That's the one thing. I don't care, dude. He surfed so good all the way through this season. Uh, impressive performances all the way out there. And, and uh, again, knowing that he has some growth in him, I mean, we could see him doing this again for another five, six, seven t world titles. Yeah, even Kelly Slater mentioned that. There, there's still growth in his surfing. We'll see him evolve. Uh, if he wants to put that time in at those venues, he's got the technique oh. to really start collecting we big saw results it. there. Yeah, we saw it in Heat too, you know, at Didi. I mean, he had two amazing waves, and it's just a matter of him just digging you know, an extra couple strokes, and it's all there. Let's have a look at the women's bracket now. This was the, the remarkable story today. Stephanie Gilmore, fifth seed coming into this contest, and have a look at the surfers that she had to overcome. Absolutely unbelievable. I mean, Steph was in this same heat last year and it was heartbreak. She was out first, you know, the first heat of the morning. We, she, she didn't have her feet for the first three waves uh, when she took off this morning and, and she had to come from behind to just get through that heat with Brisa. She had a tight heat with Tatiana. She dominated the heat with Joanne and then into those two back-to-back -back final matches with Carissa Moore and she took them both convincingly and we spoke about it pete these two uh, really hadn't battled for for world titles they had kind of sleepy years when the other was on fire but this year we got that 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 great showdown there and steph really took control early we, we got the storybook right and uh, you know whoever you were voting for in that last final you know i think that that's what we wanted to see was that matchup and it went steph's way uh, again very gracious trying to give it a, you know the world title to carissa but i'll tell you this is what the format is they're all signed up for it right this is the finals day and you're going to get sometimes where an upset happens even if you've dominated the whole year you got to be able to perform in this this type of format this final uh five was so impressive and i and i please don't ever change it uh it's been so good for surfing it really has uh, Carissa and Steph Gilmore, what a remarkable battle it was. Carissa, of course, chasing a sixth world title, trying to track Steph down, but Steph looking to break the deadlock with Carissa, with Lane Beachley, sorry, and she's finally got it done there, and it's, it's been a, a mission to get there. Yeah, Lane and Steph have been on seven for a long time now, but, uh, yeah, Steph finally cracked the eight. She's in number 88. Today's the 8th of September. She got an eight in the final. There's lots of eights Whoa, flying around. Look at you. I don't know, I'm not superstitious, she is. <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it was a, a magic performance, that's for sure. But it's been a magic career, and we're going to reflect on some big world title moments for Stephanie Gilmore, going way back to her first title. Just amazing when she burst onto the scene. She was so dominant, winning multiple events, and she was hard to stop. She had an incredible run. 
She just kept racking up the world title victories. Four on the trot, and then Carissa Moore came on the scene and started to get a few back from her, but it's just remarkable to think that now she's 34 years of age and she's not slowing down at all. Had a CT victory this year, has capped off the year with that eighth, eighth world title. It's just remarkable stuff. Think she can go for uh, Kelly's 11? Absolutely. Right? Let's just spur it on, right? Let's just keep feeding it. But Steph Gilmore is officially the greatest ever, and that is spelled with an eight. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Just a, a massive emotional moment for her out there in the lineup. She really, I, I think, pieced the puzzle together after a really sloppy start in the opening match, saved herself. There was a little trip up with priority from Brisa and, and Steph capitalised. And after that, she just didn't look back. She just looked so intent on, on getting to that goal. You felt the momentum just shift. It's like it just flooded over her and she took that into the next heat. And it was like that, you know, this whole year has been quite, you know, all over the place for Steph. She missed pipe. She lost out of sunset early. She had to fight her way into that top uh, to make the cut, sorry, at Margaret River. And then to make this top five, she's been fighting so hard all year. And I think this is, you know, the whole year wrapped up and that momentum finally came to her in that first heat and she took it and ran. Yeah, her, her, her best was on show today, Pete, those yeah. rail turns, that, that seamless flow. And when Steph's on, she, she links it together, together better than anyone. It's so true. Uh, and, and it got better and better, too. I mean, even with Tati, Tati had already put like an eight and a, and a high five against her before Steph even got in a wave in that in match number two. Um, and then she got the set and, and, and matched it, right? And then built upon that. And then the momentum just kept going her way. And it just felt like it was destiny. Uh, you know, this first heat here was, like you mentioned, a very tough start. We we're going, uh-oh, are we going to see this happen again? You know, and Brees is going to get this glorified run. But uh, it didn't happen because Steph came back with guns ablaze, and then it's where it started, and it didn't stop. Unbelievable. And then straight into a, her second match with Tatiana Weston Weber. I thought this one was extremely close and probably could have gone either way. But I think the judges really did uh, stamp the big number for Steph with her progression. Yeah, you know, she really manufactured that score. It was a small wave and she made it happen. And then she took all of that confidence into this heat with Joanne DeFay. And she got 16 points plus, two eight-point rides. Just didn't even let Joanne get out of the gates, really. And this is where the confidence, you could just see it was oozing out of her ears. Steph is obviously a, a very strong woman, but sometimes competitively when there's nerves, it looks like she's maybe lacking some strength in the legs and we see incompletions. Not today. No. After the, the first couple of falls, Pete, she really cleaned things up and she attacked in section. She drifted the fins and threw a couple of reverses at us. It was, I mean, that was in the style of surfing she was using here, it did take a lot of strength. I mean, there was holding of the rail all the way through those moves. I mean, it was digging in, it was all the way to the end, pushing the fins. And so you're gonna get fatigued doing that style of surfing, but she didn't look frail at all. She just went from strength to strength. It was unbelievable. And she put the pressure on Carissa Moore. We've seen Carissa get in that, you know, in, into that situation last year, but she just didn't even let her get out of it. We were talking about some of those new contenders chasing a maiden world title, trying to stop Steph's momentum through the contest. The key has always been against these multiple world champions. Get that first big number on the exchange. And Steph did that to Carissa in both their matches. She got the good number to kick things off and, and didn't back down. It's so cool to see. I mean, that's a, a championships form. Uh, again, I, I really, whatever she did to get prepared for this event, it worked, right? If it was, uh, you know, the, the moment of, of solitude, or, you know, the training that she did, uh, I mean, I don't really know exactly what she was doing, but ultimately that recipe, yeah, keep on it. I relish the opportunity to sit back and listen to Mick Fanning and Kelly Slater, two surfers who've experienced those world title moments so often. And Mick saying, you, you never really know how you're going to react in that moment. And Steph, obviously, really focused all day, Laura, but then just let it all out uh, when she hit the beach. She did. She was emotional, and you could just tell how much this meant to her. She's been wanting to crack that seven for a long time, and she got it done. And I think, yeah, this is, you know, like she said in all of her post seat interviews, you know, this is an emotional victory, and this is, you know, a collection of everything that she's worked for her whole life. So amazing job. we got more coming on the 805 post show, but right now it is time to crown our champions. We'll throw it to Joe Tappel. Thank you so much, Ronnie. Thank you, everybody here locally here in Southern California.
California that came down for the biggest day in pro surfing at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Thank you so much for showing up. Give you guys yourselves a round of applause. You're a part of pro surfing history today. This is the Rip Curl WSL Finals, just in the second ever edition, creating a format where we crown our champions in the water. And it's not just from anyone on tour, it's the final five. And to get there, it's almost impossible. Thinking about how we started off this year at Pipeline, the first season ever from start to finish, where we had men and women competing at the same venues, all the way from Pipe to Tahiti. And what about the mid-season cut at Margaret River? A grip round of applause for the entire tour and the pro surfers that give their heart and their passion as they're dedicated to turn in their best each and every event. What a great time for the WSL to really open this event and formally recognize that Trestles is the modern name of the ancient Ahashiman village site known as the Panhe. The Ahashiman people have lived in this place that we call Orange County for over 10,000 years and are still here stewarding the land alongside surfers, environmentalists, and others who care about our shared coastline. We thank them for their ongoing presence and participation in this event. We'd like our pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. Thank you so much. Very special individual up here with us that we just love so much. It reminds us of coming here to this part of the world. She has such a warm heart and a warm welcome for all of you. I'd like to introduce Adelia Sandoval, spiritual overseer of the Juanenio Band of Mission Indians, also known as the Ahashiman Nation, who will say a few words. Thank you very much. I am so happy to be here to represent the Ahashiman people, the indigenous people of this land. And we are so happy that we were able to participate with the World Sur Surf League and all of the other sponsors and all of the other beautiful people. And I want to thank the San Onofre Foundation and the Coalition to Protect Panhe and Native Like Water because we've been working together to protect this ocean and this land for generations to come. And I also want to say, I want to say a beautiful word. I, I, I want you to, I wish I could teach it to you. Maybe you, some of you will catch on. It's a lo mahna li mi vuktum. And what that means in our language is surf dancers. And that's exactly what was going on today. They were dancing with the ocean. So I just want to share that word because I love that word and that's a, a beautiful thing. So thank you again for honoring the people of this land. You, you don't know how much that means to us because we've been forgotten, we thought. But no, not today and not this time. So, yes. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you so very much. Beautiful opportunity to continue the thanks to the local community here in San Clemente for sharing this amazing wave with us. You guys are extra special. All you guys know who you are that run this lineup on each and every day. We can't thank you enough. Also want to thank Congressman Mike Levin, the San Clemente Mayor Kathy Ward, Mayor Pro 10 Gene James, San Clemente City Council members Chris Duncan, Laura Ferguson, and Steve Noblock. Also big thanks to the California State Parks, Lori Coble, Mark Allen, State Park Superintendent Scott Kibbe. We also want to thank our Southern California We Are One Ocean Coalition partners who have supported us at this event, Native Like Water, San Onofre Parks Foundation, and the Surf Rider Foundation as well. Let's give them a round of applause. They've done so much for this event. We also have our title sponsor to really thank here for a store competition once again. Big thanks to Rip Curl, the ultimate surfing company, for their partnership across professional surfing throughout the whole year, leading all the way up to the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Just maxes out their support for pro surfing for now and the future. Thank you to our event sponsors, Red Bull, Oakley, Turtle Bay, 805, Flying Embers, Sambazon, Tequila Eterno Verano, Shiseido, Pura Vida, Hydro Flask, Expedia, 805 Beer, Alaska Airlines, Fuwax, True Surf, and Turtle Bay. Thank you for all the great support. Some amazing people up here on stage that work tirelessly for pro surfing so that surfers can live their dreams and so your fans can live their dreams. Let's hear it for Jesse Miley Dyer, WSL SVP, the tours of head of competition. Astounding job once again, Jess. We can't thank you enough. 
And also right next to her, the CEO of the World Surf League, our fearless leader. We will follow you wherever you go. We'll warm welcome for CEO Eric Logan. And I wouldn't mind if you said a few words. Thank you, Joe. We're going to keep this very brief. But first of all, how was today for the final five? Yes. No question that we are crowning the undisputed world champions in the water for the first time in the history of pro surfing for the second consecutive year. I'd like to say a special thank you to our title sponsor and to my partner, Brooke Ferris, again from Rip Curl. Thank you for everything, the ultimate surf company. We will appreciate your support. And I want to say thank you to all of the 10 finalists and all of our championship tour surfers all year for what they have done and they've committed to make the year what it is. And what a day we've had today. How about witnessing history long overdue from brazil number 77 the first ever world championship for felipe toledo let's give it up for him yes 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 and we witnessed a second historic moment something that we may never ever see again on one of the greatest days in the history of pro surfing watching one of the greatest to ever do it stephanie gilmore come from the five seed run the table and win her undisputed eighth world title stephanie gilmore I want to be the first to say this to stephanie and to the world Stephanie, you are the greatest, and we will spill great with eight. Great with eight. So with that, I do believe, Mr. Trapel, we have some hardware to hand out. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your support all year. Thank you for your love of pro surfing, and let's bring out our champions. Thank you so much, Hilo. Without further ado, let's really make some noise. What a year it's been for your 2022 world champion, Felipe Toledo. What a year it's been for Felipe. Nine long years on the championship tour. 2013 rookie started winning events in 2015. We don't have to wonder anymore. We don't have to talk about the hype. We don't have to talk about the what ifs. Your dream is officially realized. You are the world champion, Felipe. How is it sinking in? It doesn't get it doesn't get much better than this, you know. Um, uh, first of all, I you know I want to thank Jesus. Um, you know, like the, what he did throughout my life, you know, in the last week and well, the entire year. And you know, like a lot of a lot of times, you know, I was really close to, um, you know, like just you know like not really understand things and 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 just you know i kept calm and collected and that came from from the guy up there and um and last night we had you know we had a moment with uh pastor john and taryn ananda my wife uh, my family was you know praying to and um two words that you know um he gave it to us peace and power and that's what I had out there, you know, I had a lot of peace and, you know, like I was just waiting on the right waves and surfing it with, you know, like calm um, and, you know, just releasing the power in the waves and with the energy of everybody. But um, after that, you know, my family, we've been doing this, we've been doing this for nine years and, you know, it's, uh, it pays off in the end, you know, and whoever, you know, is chasing your dreams, it does pay off. You know, it's it's hard. Um, it's hard. You get tired. Lots of ups and downs. Uh, a lot of you know really bad thoughts. But um, 
you know, we did it. We did it, and this is going to be here. This is for Brazil. This is for my family. Um, and this is for you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Felipe Toledo, you world champion. Five finals, two wins, and winning the Rip Curl WSL finals. Just the other day, we talked about what it would be like, and you had to stay calm and ready to compete. Now that you can let go, is it starting to realize what a world champion means to you? Um, not yet, man. It's too much to digest, you know? All the, the waves and uh, seeing what Itala did, you know, the entire day, coming from first heat of the day all the way to the finals. And um, I don't know, man. It's just, you know, just the entire year of what I did and um, how, you know, I, I dealt with everything that happened. And I feel like it's going to take a few days to to you know to sink in to really understand what's going on but right now it, it does feel amazing <laughs> you've done it you're the best surfer in the world felipe enjoy your moment your 2022 world champion taking out the rip curl wsl finals I want felipe to stay here because we've got more hardware to hand out this surfer qualified back in 2007 won a world title in her rookie year shared a title with a shared a record with lane beachley with seven titles but now she stands alone now let me introduce the greatest an eight-time world champion stephanie gilmore <laughs> Stephanie Gilmore went four in a row, and the tour just got better and better. And now finally to get eight, Steph. Step on this way. I know you've held a few of these before. Congratulations. We've said that to you a lot of times. You can rest it if you'd like. Yeah, hang on to it. Winning your title so early, so young, it came so naturally, and they just get harder and harder to do it. And a season where you're missing events at the start out of your hands to where you're standing today has got to be one of the most heroic years of your career. How are you feeling now on the stage? Yeah, I've uh, won a lot of titles in different ways and, and this, to be honest, was the best win I've had. To, to come all the way from fifth and just grind it out all the way to the final, I, you know, I, I knew it was possible and you know, I could try and conserve some energy and, and make it work, but I'm against, you know, Brisa, Tati, Joanne, Carissa, they're all my favourite female surfers, they're incredible and, and I knew it would be tough, but yeah, I'm stoked I had a shot at it and here we are, anything's possible, this is so cool. You've had some fine moments with Riss over your career. A couple of years ago when this format was introduced, I asked her if there was one surfer she'd won in the title match. She mentioned your name. It wasn't like a secret. She was like, I'd love to have Steph. Sometimes you guys missed each other over those title showdowns, but you finally got to share the water together to the most decorated surfers in the sport. What did it mean to you to have Riss in there? Yeah, sitting out there in the final uh, next to Carissa, I was just admiring her, her strength and, and her humbleness. And she's, you know, she's the best female surfer in my eyes. So to sit there and, and battle it out for a world title against her was the greatest moment in my career. So I'm really, really happy that I was able to push through and, and get the win. And, you know, Carissa had such a stellar year um, on the rankings. And, and in, my, in my eyes, she's really the, the world champion. But... This is so cool that we were able to come down here and battle it out and, and uh, I was able to get the win, so I'm freaking so stoked. <laughs> well, now you hold the record all to yourself. You've got eight. Seven-time world champion Lane Beachley's watching. What would you like to say to Lane? <laughs> Hi, Lane. <laughs> now I want to say thanks, Lane. Thanks for paving the way and showing us what's possible. And it was always a, a dream of mine to win eight world titles and, uh, it, you know, eight's a really nice looking number. Um, I actually didn't think I was going to get there, but wow, this is, this is really special and I'm, I'm really honoured to, to be able to hold that record and, 
and thank you for all that you've done, Lane. And um, yeah, I actually, just, I also want to say, like, Felipe, you are the coolest guy ever. So happy. Felipe has deserved to be world champion for a long time, and yeah, really the most amazing surfing all year. And yeah, such a, such such an honor to share the stage with you. Thank you. Thank you. What a great moment for world champions, two of the very best. Steph, I know you probably have a lot of people to thank, changing surfing history. And I love that you said that this has the most meaning to you, because we ask you all the time which title means the most or what will it mean for one more. And to have you sitting here to have this one realized as your biggest accomplishment is huge. Who would you like to thank? How my family and my friends, you know, without, without you guys, without the support, or ongoing support from, you know, since I was 12 years old and decided I wanted to be the best female surfer in the world, it was like, all right, let's, let's do it. And, and uh, my coach, Tom Whitaker, he's been awesome this year. We've had a lot of fun. Um, Kanoa and Griffin, we've had a lot of fun traveling together and learning from each other. Um, and then, yeah, I'd like to thank Roxy and Darren Hanley, actually, he made me a really sick board right before this comp started. <laughs> And yeah, it held true. It was the first time I wrote it when I got here this week and it's an epic surfboard. So thank you, Darren, you're a legend. Um, my, yeah, who else? I don't know, everyone, you guys all roll, woo! One more time for Stephanie Gilmore, a true legend of the sport and eight-time world champion. Coming from the number five seed, Felipe Toledo, his first world title in 2022. Thank you everybody here at Lowers for joining us for a special part of Surfing History. We'll send it back to Ronnie Blakey on the 805 Post Show. Thank you so much. Good on you, Joe, and great job down there on the main stage. There are your champions for 2022. Very deserving. Step breaking through for the eighth. Felipe Toledo getting his first world title, but do you get the feeling there's more coming down the line? The, the way he surfs with that growth that we were talking about before, Pete, you know, it could be a dominant force here. Looking at, you know, our schedule, we're going to most likely have a, a new addition here and there, right? But we're going to have those staples where Felipe is really dominant. You know, you think about J-Bay, you think about Bells, uh, you think about, uh, you know, El Salvador, like places that those are, this is going to be right up his alley. He's going to be a contender for a long time. And then there's the, the events that you're going to see some growth, you know? And I think that that's something that just, a, it's just a switch. It really is because the talent is there, the, the ability is there. It's all there. Um, and it, as we can see, it, it, it's incredible. Um, you know, and I think we may have a venue change, right, for our finals. Uh, you know, that could be a, a something down down the line, right? And ultimately, I think you're going to have to to adjust to it. But that experience right now uh, of him having that number one seed in this in this finals and to turn it and make it happen and get it done, and he seemed like the, the guy to beat, and it, ultimately he was. Goat fest on the main stage, <laughs> Kelly Slater and Stephanie Gilmore there, amazing. 19 world titles collectively. <laughs> Incredible. 20, if you include Felipe. Uh, it was amazing to hear just the support, the, the thank yous to obviously family and friends, obviously Felipe living here uh, in San Clemente and, you know, obviously had a, a big turnout. Uh, but Steph has always kept it pretty low profile. Sometimes her, her family turns up. It was Whitney here, her sister, uh, but I know back home they'd be watching on and probably wiping tears away because it's been a, a big emotional day for them. But both surfers had their shapers here as well, which was pretty cool. I, I love that they were able to acknowledge them because I feel like that's a big part of it. Equipment is so huge. And, uh, you know, Darren putting a little magic surfboard underneath Steph's feet, uh, it, it looked very similar to what she's been riding, you know, throughout the year. But ultimately, there's something that has to happen for this event because it's one day you got to have that magic board under your feet. And if you have that, that confidence is going to carry you. And it did. It carried her for Steph. And then also Marcio Zuvi getting his first world title uh he's deserved it he had you know as many surfers as he had last year and then he had this year to finally get that world title so congratulations to sharp Eye. yeah most definitely let's have a look at the uh, men's road to the final or, or felipe toledo's road to this victory uh, he was waiting to see who, who he'd come up against obviously he had a fantastic chance he's so strong at this venue laura he didn't disappoint yeah he turned up pretty late in the day you know he, he just hung at home with his family and showed up and was totally on came out firing with his 7.5 i think it was and we knew straight away the confidence was oozing and he was just just switched into that gear that he had been in last year so felipe just 
showing incredible signs off the bat. Back on the quad, Pete. Uh, his control with that board, where he chooses to place it and push it to the point of release, is pretty unique. It is, and it ultimately I think you can talk to, obviously, the, the construction being the dark arts construction done with sharp eyes shaping abilities. So there's got to be a, a refinement in that style of surfboard. And then you've got the FCS2 H4 fins, which are meant to go really fast and hold in. And we can see that. It's working for him. Um, you know, it's something that he didn't want to stray from because it's not like this board comes out at every event. Matter of fact, it kind of only really comes out here at Trestles. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, so strong. I, I did chat to four-time world champ Mark Richards and just got his thoughts on Felipe coming in as the number one seed. He, he said to me he is so deserving of that world title, his rail game, his air prowess, uh, definitely worthy uh, of winning that crown. And, you know, he, he's just made for this new format, and that's what makes him such a threat. He's a, he's a, a big showman, and... I mean that in the kindest way. He's not a show off. He yeah, just no. really loves to work a crowd. He's an entertainer. Yeah, and, and ultimately it's with performances like that which he's just shown. And I, again, we came in the very first day we come into this event. Uh, Felipe was the man to beat. He was the best surfer at Trestles. Uh, and there's guys that could beat him in those moments, but ultimately, if you're going to look at it as a, a whole surfer, he is the man to beat here. And for him to go number two last year, number one this year, must feel very. Where's he going to go next year? Well, he has to do another title, right? I mean, that's ultimately what you do. If you're going to come back, come next year, it better be another title. <laughs> it was an, another very strong performance here from Italo Ferreira. And with his big air of the day, he's going to take our flying embers moment. Let's check it out. Italo, he's got that look to him. Spring loaded, tail high, full oh, rotation, but butter. Straight butter right here. I really did well to get himself into a, a shot for a second world title here this year, Pete. Uh, it, it it was a year that had some moments, but he didn't get that big breakthrough win. But I feel like it's going to give him a, a lot to, to launch from heading into next season. For sure. You know, and I think that, uh, you know, that it was it was a challenging year for him. Um, it wasn't easy for him to get scores like it was in the past. And I don't know if it was just the, the, the type of conditions he had to surf in uh, ultimately, you know, but uh, we didn't get to see as many big errors like we usually see from him. And I think a lot of it had to do with conditions. Maybe he was just trying a different approach. Uh, but I think that we need to see that style of surfing from Ito. That's what we expect from him. Um, and he has such high consistency. And, and you know, he, he could have done it on those lefts. He was eyeing it. And, you know, he, he pulls one of those full rotations. We could be into, you know, match number three, heat number three. Well, uh, Trestles, it's a special place, and we want to celebrate those that are helping to protect it, Surfrider in particular, and the great work that they're doing with We Are One Ocean. Hey, this is Chad Nelson, CEO of the Surfrider Foundation. I'm here at Trestles, one of California's most iconic surf spots and part of San Onofre State Beach. It's important to recognize that Trestles is a significant site of Native American history. Miyuyam. My name is Adelia Sandoval. I am the spiritual overseer of the one annual band of Mission Indians, a Hashiman Nation. We are the indigenous people of Orange County. This beautiful stretch of land and ocean, famously known as Trestles, dwells in the arms of two locations, Keeshpamai, also known as San Onofre, and Panhe, a prominent village site that is at least 12,000 years old. We proudly join together with the Surfrider Foundation and WSL to preserve and protect these lands and oceans for future generations. Hi, I'm Steve Long. I'm the retired lifeguard chief for San Onofre State Beach and also the founder of the San Onofre Parks Foundation. The San Onofre Parks Foundation and other groups have been working diligently for the last seven years, encouraging both the state of California and the federal government so that we can preserve this park for all future generations. And we'd like to acknowledge the United States Marine Corps Camp Pendleton for their co-stewardship of this land. This amazing place, home to world-class surfing as well as endangered species, was threatened by a six-lane private toll road that would have destroyed the park and the pristine waves of trestles. Fortunately, the Surfrider Foundation, along with the San Onofre Parks Foundation and coalition partners, including tribal representatives, thousands of activists, worked tirelessly to save trestles through years of grassroots advocacy. All of this paid off recently when California signed a law that bans any future roads in the state park. As a WSL Pure partner 
and supporter of the We Are One Ocean initiative, we encourage everyone to join us in protect and conserve our global ocean. To learn more about the Surfrider Foundation's mission, visit us at surfrider.org. If you're not a Surf Rider Foundation member, get involved. Uh, you get great knowledge fed to you. You get really well educated on what the big challenges are and we are one ocean that has been fantastic throughout the year we've got a special treat for you now tahiti gave us some amazing highlights and as we go to break we're going to show you some of that and don't forget to download the adobe express app coral is such a huge part of our life as surfers it's what makes these amazing waves we have to try and protect it at all costs all the coral fragments are in the water and they will teach you how to make some ropes. We are on a mission to revolutionize ocean conservation and try to build a movement to help save coral reef ecosystems. It plays an important role, not just surfers, fishermen, fish, sharks, all kinds of wildlife and marine wildlife. Is that that big? We invite all the kids from um, our club and the community to come. It's just very important because the kids are the future. Download the Adobe Express app, search for World Surf League to get our custom template. Share your creations on social with hashtag CreateWaves and hashtag WeAreOneOcean and tag Adobe and WSL. We are one ocean. Welcome back to the 805 Post Show here at the Rip Curl WSL Finals. Our world champs, they got their trophies, they're in celebration mode and we're not too far away but we've still got a couple of things to get through before we uh, we tuck into these little treats here on, on the set. But, they're uh, nice and chilled though for you Ronnie, no worries. How fun was today to have so many incredible guests on the show. We were blessed with the presence of, of world champions Laura but also some of the more uh, exciting surfers on the championship tour at the moment. Yeah, we had a lot of amazing, you know, guests in uh, Lisa Anderson, Sophie Milanovic, and then obviously Mick Fanning, and who else? Who was your favourite? Debbie Beecham. Oh, uh, Slater, Lisa Anderson, you said that, right? Yeah, Tom uh, Carroll. Tom Carroll. It was awesome. But uh, we also had Griffin Colapinto on the show, and Osby. Griffin, really popular, gave great insights on this location, and we know after he broke through and got his first two CT victories this year that he's going to be a force in 2023. But he's also been doing some great work behind the scenes with the Oakley Board Drive. Here's a fantastic story for you to check out. For me to be able to donate boards to the kids in South Africa is a great feeling knowing that these kids are going to start surfing for the first time and I'm happy that we're able to give that to some other people. Yeah, I'm just stoked to pass it on to someone else, keep it, keep it going, just stoke some other kids out. It's going to be sweet for them to get some boards, get involved in surfing, just kind of share the happiness that we all have here. Oh, this is huge for us because we've got over 130 kids in the program every month. So getting these boards is going to be really huge for us. Kids in our program have gone on to do incredible things. And that's really the important part of this is we want to prepare the kids for being self-sustainable. The kid that makes it out of the streets, turns their life around and does an ordinary job. Well, that's an extraordinary story and something that they can be super proud of. And we were lucky enough to, to rub shoulders with some of those Groms over at J-Bay this year and just see the stoke on their faces when they received those boards. It was awesome. Yeah, anything. so cool. Yeah, anything we were giving, a little grit of grip, some wax, uh, you know, boards, obviously. But uh, Surfers Not Street Children, uh, great organization. They sure are. Uh, of course, the championship tour season is a wrap. Our, our champions are crowned, but we've still got to discover who's going to be joining the elite ranks to challenge for a, a final finish next season. Let's have a look at the Challenger Series schedule, which is uh, going to get back underway very soon with, uh, of course, that big event over there at Era Syrup. You're heading over? I, I've got the invite. haven't uh, committed yet. Uh, I'm waiting to see if John gets a spot here. <laughs> Punch uh, the ticket. <laughs> First to the ninth is at, uh, in October. It, it still almost have half the season. I mean, you think about these two, three events left, you know, with the Corona Sacramento going to go back there. 
and then the Holly Eva Challenger Series to finish out the season. We got 10 more surfers to add to the 24 that are already allocated by finish this season here on the championship tour. It's going to be awesome to see. And I love the big finish at Holly Eva because it's a, a wave that can test the competitors. There's a lot of power there. And uh, yeah, you, you really earn your place on the championship tour with so that cool. last event. But uh, let's talk uh, about crowning more world champions. Next month, we've got the completion of the Longboard World Championships, and we're going to be crowning our champs there at Malibu. It's going to be a lot of fun to watch that unfold. It's been hotly contested so far this year, and there's just been some, I just think, next-level beauty in the approach of our Longboard stars. Yeah, I really cannot wait to see this. Uh, Malibu, just one of the classic Longboard waves, just... You know, the history there is uh, just amazing. So I'd love to try watch that if I'm around. There's a big week there, October 3rd through the 13th for that, uh, the final. So you get to watch that and then you just roll into the Challenger Series in France, right? So it's like, uh, I'm sorry, in Portugal. Uh, and it's going to be surfing all day long, 24-7. Yeah, October, October's sorted. We're sweet for October. <laughs> but uh, September has also been pretty sweet as well. This is always a, a big one to, to highlight on the calendar. I, I really can't believe we got it done on the first day of the event window. Uh, amazing result. History has been made here today, and it's now time to see uh, just how it all unfolded with our top five moments kicking off. At number five is going to be the eight-time world champ, Stephanie Gilmore, who saved herself in this heat, saved her run, Laura, with an incredible last-ditch effort. This was absolutely amazing. You know, Steph, she uh, she actually, Reese actually made a uh, priority mistake here. She, she blocked Steph and handed over the priority for Steph to get this in the dying minute. And she capitalised. She ran out the beach. She didn't know if she got the score, but she did. Coming in at number two, Pete. Uh, the num uh, Sorry, number four was the number two seed. Jack Robinson, what a year he had. Yeah, and it's just unfortunate because he never really was able to get This was the best wave he had, but it was later in the heat, and uh, you didn't expect that. But, uh, you know, considering what the season he's had and been able to, to pull out at the last minutes uh, throughout, you know, the event, but uh, unfortunately didn't happen here today. And then Italo coming in at number three showed us his stamina, making it all the way to that world title matchup. Oh, uh, we know he has... Uh... Like you said, the stamina, he trains for this. He's one of the fittest on tour. But, you know, just the amount of serving he did today, the amount of waves he rode, he just had so much fun on these little lefts that got him all the way into the final series. Took down some big guns. He didn't get the world title, but, but you gave him the title of having the best abs on tour. Yes, for sure. <laughs> some great steel. <laughs> he is just... Uh, this is when he's at his best. High energy, just feeling it, working the crowd making his claims, but he was on fire today, Pete. Really explosive on the back end yeah, as well. Yeah, he had a good chance to take it all the way. He really did. I mean, Felipe, too strong, though. Didn't give him uh, that opportunity, really. Uh, and I like that Idolo was uh, able to get himself to number two in the world. You know, uh, that was a big feat in its own. But this guy coming in at number two in our top five moments, Felipe Toledo breaking through and on his very first wave in that... Uh, First title deciding matchup, he really showed us his power. Yeah, he did. And that was the fresh legs, too. You know, I think that that's such a distinct advantage coming into this Final Five uh, format is that the fresh legs and you get two out of three. He didn't need three. He needed in two. And uh, congratulations to him. Well deserving. Yeah, Italo had done the work. He had the stamina. But this guy, too, he's been putting in a lot of work in anticipation of this big clash. And all that work paid off today so cool it really was and uh, again there's a lot of fans down here um, for Felipe so uh, yeah. congratulations to him and making everybody happy he's had some uh, tough moments throughout his career but he has persevered and broken through for a maiden world title but at number one our top five moments it belongs to Stephanie Gilmore eight world titles and here's why she was in just career best form today she really was. She had a shaky start, but she wiped that off and she just built from strength to strength and just was in dazzling form, turning, you know, just, just creating opportunities for herself here under priority, then winning the world title. Eight for 88. On the eight. Shut up, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable stuff. Stephanie Gimmo, I feel like out of respect, just with all the world titles, event wins and accolades she's collected, we almost talk about Steph being... A, a stronger competitor or more competitively savvy competitor than she is sometimes. We give her that respect, but today she showed it. Yeah. She really did put on a great performance. Well, we know whatever she ate for dinner last night, she's going to eat 
before every contest for the rest of her <laughs> life now because she's superstitious. It's she's all about probably, the dinner. She's probably going to have to wash that wetsuit and uh, yeah, well, wear then that we had the cash too. cow, right? We had a new cash cow. <laughs> Mrs. Superstition. Well, guys, it's been a, an unbelievable day, a fantastic year. It's been a lot of fun calling the heats with you. Same. On behalf of our broadcast team, we want to say thanks for watching and make sure you enjoy these highlights and stay tuned to worldsurfleague.com for all your surf news. Love ya. I still want to see if I can match up against the best. World titles is something that I think about every day. I'm just grateful to be here because it's a special moment. I always won a trophy, you know. It's about history. Now I feel like I'm feeling comfortable on tour. Uh... I want to win a world title to prove to myself that I can do it. Trying to make every moment count. Competitively, it defines the best. That world title will come if you do what's right in front of you. To prove to myself that I can win and, of course, for my family. The time has finally arrived to witness the world title showdown. To have the best in the world competing here on finals day, I mean, today is the day that we'll have the biggest day in surfing and crowning world champs. I can't see it no other way. My life been one big fight. It's just another day. Gilmore does it. Her hope for an eighth world title continues. Look at these guys just battling. I'm headed to wherever God me too knocking out haters saying look at what you made me do if anyone's gonna go the distance and have the energy i mean each has so much in the tank <laughs> i got my robe bone name across the back audio hustle this is where it's at steph gilmore moving on into match number three he said wow i got that knockout flow that hits them hard like a knockout flow don't you see who I got in my corner? That's why I'm in the ring, doing what I want. I'm gonna fight, I'm gonna fight for mine. Stephanie Gilmore, what a performance. Wow. How's that? Match one, both sides of the draw, getting all the way to the title match. We didn't expect that. The stage is set for the Rip Curl WSL Finals for the title match. <laughs> The best of three. It will be Carissa Moore taking on Stephanie Gilmore. We just live. Yeah. Gilmore has just taken the first match to have the advantage. You stand you With authority, no warm up required for Felipe. <laughs> One of the most deserving moments of Stephanie Gilmore's career, officially an eight-time world champion. Felipe stepping into motion. Big frontside hook. Felipe Toledo, your champion of the Rip Girl WSL Finals and your 2022 world champ. Absolutely incredible. Congratulations to Felipe. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League.